Chapter 4 Off the Ship The wind's against us, Joe said as he and Tommy rowed. Even after the boat moved past the breakers, it kept bouncing up and down on the swell of the waves. Water splashed over the sides and soaked Jack's clothes. But Jack wasn't worried about the wind or water. He was worried about being seasick, because waves of nausea had started to come over him. Sorry, it's a bit of tough going, Henry said. We can take it, Annie said. We hope, thought Jack. The last thing he wanted to do was throw up, especially in front of Joe and Tommy. We should get back just in time to see the men haul up the morning's catch, said Henry. This is so much fun, said Annie, her eyes shining as the little rowboat bobbed up and down. Jack wasn't having any fun at all. To keep from being sick, he gripped his backpack, closing his eyes, and gritted his teeth. Every day we make new discoveries, said Henry. Off the coast of Argentina, we found over 100 new species. Giant worms, several feet long, shrimp the size of lobsters, caught them in our nets, didn't we, Joe? Aye, said Joe, as he pulled on the oars. But the creature that's never been caught is the one these mates should be worried about. What creature is that? asked Annie. The great monster, answered Tommy. Jack opened his eyes. What? You mean like a shark? he asked. No, no, lad, tis much worse than any shark, even the twenty-foot tiger shark that's been following us, said Tommy. The sailor blinked nervously. Whoa, twenty-foot tiger shark? thought Jack. He looked at the dark water for a shark fin. Aye, this monster's much bigger than any shark, shouted Joe. They say it looks like a cross between a dragon and a gigantic starfish. Nay, more like a floating nest of snakes, mate, said Tommy with a shudder. They say it'll curl around your body and strangle you to death. A floating nest of snakes? Annie asked. Jack gulped. He turned to Henry. Have you seen the monster? He asked the scientist. Henry shook his head. I've never seen it, he said. But a few of our crewmen claim to have glimpsed something monstrous in these waters just yesterday. Don't be scared, mates, said Joe. If we see a monster, we'll hurl our harpoons at him. We'll shoot him with our cannons, said Tommy. He and Joe laughed loudly. Maybe the sailors on the ship are just trying to scare the scientists, Jack thought hopefully. Why else would they be laughing? When they reached the HMS Challenger, the rowboat drew alongside the big ship, rocking on the water. Jack gripped his pack tighter as more waves of seasickness washed over him. You go first, mate, Joe said to Jack. You're looking a bit green. Clutching his pack under one arm, Jack grabbed the sides of the ladder. He held on tightly and climbed from the wooden hull of the ship up to the top deck. Annie came after him, then Henry, Joe, and Tommy. When they were all on the deck, the two seamen hauled up the rowboat. Jack took a long, deep breath. Though the large ship rocked in the wind, it wasn't nearly as bad as the small rowboat's movement on the waves. Looking around the deck, Jack saw teams of sailors working. Some were coiling thick ropes. Others were hauling up strange-looking buckets. Jack turned to ask Henry what the sailors were doing, but Henry was staring at a tall man in a white uniform and a heavy-set older man in a dark suit who were walking briskly toward them. The two men were frowning. Oh, no, murmured Henry. Prepare to meet my doom. Who are they? asked Annie. Before Henry could answer, the man in white shouted, What have you done this time, Mr. Mosley? Jack moved closer to Annie. He clutched his pack to his life vest. Well, Captain, I... started Henry. Goodness, what have you brought up from the sea now, Henry? the portly man asked. A four-legged, four-armed creature of the deep? Yes, Professor, it's a Jack and Annie from America, said Henry. I found the creature vacationing on the island. The portly man smiled. Ha, ah, I see. I thought perhaps it was the monster that was sighted by some of the men yesterday. The monster again, thought Jack. This ship is not a place for children, Mr. Mosley, the captain said gruffly. 
Yes, I know, sir, said Henry, but these two are extraordinary. They hardly seem like children at all. They're quite independent and have great knowledge of the sea. I thought it might be permissible to bring them aboard for the afternoon and then return them to the shore. I'm afraid it goes against all the ship's rules, said the captain. It's not Henry's fault, Captain, Annie piped up. We begged him to let us visit your ship. Ah, did you now? the portly man asked, his eyes twinkling. Why is that? We love the ocean, said Annie. And we'd really like to learn more about sea exploration, sir, said Jack. Well, you've come to the right place, said the man. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Professor Thompson, the scientific director of the Challenger. The professor is one of the world's most renowned experts on the ocean, said Henry. Wow, said Annie. Well, I don't know about that, the professor said modestly, but he put his thumbs in his vest and began speaking as if he were giving a lecture. Since the beginning of the time, the secrets of the deep have been hidden from us. But now, with our expedition, we have learned many things. Like what? asked Jack. We have used miles and miles of steel wire to measure the depth of the sea, said the professor. We have lowered thermometers to measure temperatures in the deep. But perhaps, most important of all, we are learning about the amazing creatures who live in the dark regions far beneath the ocean waves. That is all well and good, Professor, the captain broke in. But I want these children off this ship immediately, before the weather gets worse. Do you hear, Mr. Mosley? Off the ship!